I would like to introduce this morning or this evening to all of you, Sylvia Endelhart. Thank you so much for coming back for the second time to this series. She was one of the teachers, the greatest teachers that started this series with us. If you have seen her class with Alex Rivas, I recommend you to go to her platform and look for the recording. The class is there and was amazing was about meditation and uh, she gave an extraordinary class and give a lot of advices. So I highly recommend you to go and check out the class. And also I want to introduce this morning or this evening to one of my dearest teachers, Venerable Kelsey. Thank you so much for joining this morning or this evening. She was the director, one of the directors of Diamond Mountain Retreat Center. And I have the pleasure to say that I live and serve with her a few years ago. And uh, the time that I spent with her changed my life. So thank you very much for always teaching and always serving. I don't want to take more time of this precious class. So thank you very much. I give you the powers. Thank you, Ale. Thank you very much. Uh, shall I start, dear Venerable Gielse? Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you, dear friends, so much for being here, everyone. It's so nice to see you all and reconnect with each other across the continents. Thank you, uh, dear ACI volunteers and uh, ACI employees for inviting us and for all your hard work, uh, the chances you are giving us to study the precious Dharma is invaluable, really. Thank you, dear translators. You make it possible for everyone to join in. And Thank you, dear Venerable Gielse, for the book you wrote about the book. <laughs> <laughs> that helped me in the beginning to understand this valuable practice a lot better. And it is also the title of our talk today, Make Your Dreams Come True. So at the beginning, I will try to sell you the idea to do your book, and uh, then Venerable Gielse will talk about specifics, how to do it. And then we will focus on your questions and share tips and tricks. We already got some cool questions and uh, you are welcome to put your questions in the chat. So I started with the book in September, 2005. And for the last almost 18 years, I didn't skip a day. I love this practice and I'm extremely grateful for this precious tool. So uh, to the translators, uh, if, the part, if the, my pace is too uh, fast, please let me know. So back then when I was a freelancer and uh, my finances were going up and down, so sometimes I had well-paid jobs and sometimes I didn't and it was exhausting. So luckily a friend gave me the diamond cutter, Geshe Michael's most famous book, and I learned about the seeds. So he recommends picking three problems and work on those for some time with the six times book. Three problems, twice a day, six entries, right? So I started the book with three correlations from the diamond cutter. I started to work on wealth and a good job environment. And after seven months, I had a job in the company I really liked and I'm still working there. Uh, I had a beautiful and very interesting career. I learned a lot. 
I'm very flexible with my time. The job is well paid. And for the last three years, I'm working for our foundation, which enables me to help many people in a conventional way. So uh, this is why I'm very grateful uh, to this practice and why I never stopped. Now, let's talk for a moment about seats. Everyone knows the pen. Uh, so you know that everything comes from seeds and we are planting new seeds all the time. 65 per finger snap. But uh, there are differences in the intensity and the strength of seeds. And that has an impact of how those seeds ripen. And according to the Timeless Wisdom text, it has also an impact on when, in which time a seed ripens. So we plant a seed just by thinking. Having a thought plants a seed. Let's take an example. Mm. I see someone sitting on a street on a cold winter day asking for money. And I think, oh, that's sad, poor guy. And I pass by and forget about him. That's planting a seed in my mind, but not a very strong seed. The mere thought is creating what we call raw or primary karma. Why primary? Because it comes first and it triggers a kind of action to do or say something. So the thought causes me to do something. I decide to walk by or stop and give the person a little money. If I stop and give, the seat is stronger because there is more interaction. I follow through, right? But to create a really powerful seat, a very strong seat, we have to throw in a couple of more ingredients. Consciously, I want to help this specific person, and that's a plan. I want to help because I feel compassion for that person. That's our motivation, which is a very powerful component. And that's why I stop and give money or a warm jacket or a hot soup, whatever. That's our action. And of course, then here's the fourth finger. And of course, then uh, the very important ingredient is to own it and to feel happy about it. And that creating a powerful seed is what the book helps you to do six times a day. Right? So with every entry, you are planning a powerful seed. Your, your to do, so the, the third, what you have to do is the plan. You think about what you want to do and with whom and how and when, and then you're happy about it in your next entry or in the evening when you're summarizing. So, mm, Every entry has also a coffee meditation built in with the plus and is a full technique to plant a powerful seed, a full path of action. So, um, and uh, uh, because if you are doing the book, then you already have the motivation to plant good seeds. So that's what the book does for you not once a week, but six times a day and in all areas of your life. It has an impact on all aspects when you keep your vows and do the 10 virtues. Mm. And here is another beauty of the six times book. You're removing the energy of a bad deed by confessing it in your book. You intelligently regret it because we are all humans and we all make mistakes. So you confess it. And uh, if you want, you can dedicate your to-do 
as a counterbalance. So this marvelous technique, the six times book, helps us to maintain uh, um, uh, uh, a mental hygiene, right? It makes our mind stream sweeter, more peaceful. It helps to create powerful good deeds. And as you go with it, it becomes a habit to speak uh, and think and uh, uh, do more sweetly. Mm. I think it is a genius way for planting good seeds, having a happy and strong mind because of this mental hygiene we are performing. So, and there is another very important thing. Remember, Geshe-la is very clear about what to do in order to see emptiness directly. So how's the time? Um, I think I have another minute. So please, uh, dear friends, help us uh, write into the chat. What are geshe recommendation? Yeah. So meditation is the first one. Uh, the, oh, slower. Oh, I'm so sorry. Mm. Good. So what are the uh, recommendations geshe gives us? Uh, we should do, what should we do in order to see emptiness directly? One is meditation, and uh, especially uh, Chedrak meditation, Claire. Thank you. So good deeds, Irina. Yes. So uh, serve those who are in need is uh, another one. There's a Chinese one. Unfortunately, I can't uh, read. Yoga, interestingly, it's not in that list, but yoga is really good. So get a teacher. Yes, exactly, Christian. We need a, a teacher and, of course, serve your lama, six perfections. Okay, the six times book. Nick, thank you so much. That's why we're here. <laughs> So first, uh, he says, meditate hard, Chi Chedrak, right? Second, keep your six times book. Find a real teacher and serve them and serve those who are in need. So that was my sales pitch. And now I'm very curious what Venerable Gyatse will teach us. Thank you for that wonderful introduction, Sylvia, and inspiration of why we should keep the book. Not just that it will improve our lives, which is huge, that it will improve our lives and, and improve the world around us, but that it will help us to get to the direct perception of emptiness so that we can become an enlightened being, right? That's like the First huge step in that is being able to see emptiness directly so that we can become enlightened and serve every being in every universe. How exciting in one little book, right? <laughs> so, so, you know, first Sylvia said, oh, just take three things to do to review in your book and do that six times a day. So some of the questions were like, well, how can I do that? It's so hard for me to do it six times a day. So I will share with you what I did <clears throat> and what I still do in fact, which is built into my day, I already have times of transition when I go from one thing to another thing. First one is when I first get up in the morning and have a cup of tea. And for me, that's when I write everything down in my book and do my first entry. Then 
I have breakfast, maybe a little while later. For me, quite a few hours later. So then I do another entry. That's two entries. Then I have lunch. That's three entries. Then I stop work. That's four entries. I eat dinner, five entries. And before I go to bed. So I use the rhythm of the day to help me keep my book. Then I don't need to have an alarm on my phone to remind me every two hours or make some big plan. It's already built into my day because I'm using those transitions, very specific ones that I have throughout the day. <clears throat> So see what your rhythms are during the day and use your six times book and your rhythms together. And then I think you will find it much easier to do than having an alarm on your phone saying, hey, it's time to do your six times book and you're in the middle of something and you can't stop and then you forget and then you criticize yourself and it, it's discouraging, right? It's really discouraging. So use the rhythm of your day, right? So Desmond says, yeah, including toilet breaks. Absolutely. You know, so figure out what your personal rhythm is and Remind yourself when you do those transitions, oh, now is a time that I can do my six times book. And if you're a little worried at work that somebody's gonna wonder what you're doing in this little book every few hours, Yeshi Michael tells the story when I first met him of going into the bathroom and doing his six times book there. So taking your, what we call bio break, a break for your biological needs, whether it's going to the bathroom, whether it's stretching, whether it's eating, and then do your book there and you can do it in private, right? You can do it in private. So what is it? As Sylvia said, you can take three things that you're working really hard on trying to shift the energy, right? That you're trying to, like in her case, have a more consistent employment and working for the people she really wanted to work for, right? And planting the seeds for that. We also use it if you have vows. And those can be the 10 good deeds or the 10 bad deeds or negative deeds, whichever way you want to look at them. We also use it. So we start with those vows first, and then we put our lay vows in as we get those. And then when we get our bodhisattva vows, we add those in and then if we get diamond wave vows, we add those in, but we're not adding more and more vows to each day. We're just only doing six. Why do we do six? So we can check on our state of our hearts and our minds six times a day. We get wrapped up in our work or whatever we're doing, running around, doing this, doing that. And we don't really check in with where our hearts are. And this practice helps us to check in and remind ourselves of what we're working to do, why we're doing this practice. So we can check in at any moment in the day with where our own minds and hearts are at. And what does that do 
it makes us much more aware. It makes us aware of our world. It makes us aware of our thoughts, which of course is what creates our world. So it's a very basic thing. And when I first got this teaching, I was so excited about it. It's like, because I was having a really hard time in my marriage at that time. And I really wanted to shift it. I ended up shifting it to the point that I no longer was married. It wasn't a happy marriage. And um, it was very powerful in a way of really helping me to see where I was creating problems in my own marriage what seeds I was planting, which I wasn't aware of at all. You know? And so this really helped me. And then, so I got very excited about it and have been doing it ever since keeping my book. As I said, you know, when we check in with our thoughts, we are then able to change the world around us since all of what we're experiencing and what we are seeing is coming from our thoughts and how we react to them. This practice then, once you get to know your own mind, can give us courage and strength we can overcome our mental afflictions bit by bit, step by step. And as Sylvia and I can attest to, and I'm sure other people on this chat, it works. This stuff works, right? That's what we should have had our t-shirts on today. This stuff works. So in one practice, you have seeds and emptiness and how to become an enlightened being in one very simple practice. How do, what do you do? You say, Sylvia, give me, give me something you want to work on. Unmute yourself. So uh, one of the questions was um, working with anger. That was, uh, yeah, one of the participants' questions. Okay, How to so do that? Thank you. Let's start with that. So there's different kinds of anger, right? There's this big general anger, which has, what does it have to do with? It has to do with I want something to be a certain way. And it's not being the way I want it. At least that's how I experience being anger, angry, right? I want, I want, I want, now, 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 me, 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 right? <laughs> that's the way I experience it. And it's not happening. And so I get frustrated or angry. And so you can start with what the thing was that made you angry or who it was. That would be what you can work on. That's what I'm working on. Being angry at my boss, right? Then we're gonna see why was I angry? And we're not going to just write down, I was angry at my boss, right? And we're not just going to write down, I was nice to my boss. We're going to go a little bit further and open it up. So a positive thing was, I was angry at my boss. And you want to get rid of your anger. A positive thing would be, what did you do that was kind? 
either to your boss or to somebody else. That would be your positive, right? I was kind. Okay, I was angry at my boss, but I was kind to Sylvia, right? That's my positive thing. I was kind to Sylvia. Yeah, I was angry at my boss over here. The negative, so we have the thing that we're working on. We have something positive. We have something that we didn't do to not do that thing. Does that make sense? It's, I don't like to call it a negative as much. It's, what is a negative? A negative is something that hurts us. So what seed did we plant that's going to hurt us to see this wheel of karma continue? Oh, I talk back to my boss in a not very nice way. What seed does that plant? It then gets plants a seed to have them do that to you. And then the anger just continues. And then we have a to-do. And the to-do then would be, I'm going to keep my mouth closed for 10 seconds when I start to get angry at my boss. Something you can really do. And you can sit there and count your 10 seconds, right? The to-do is very important because what that does is it begins to break the cycle that we have been creating from countless lifetimes. Even that one moment of keeping your mouth closed for 10 seconds, helps to begin to break that cycle. So the positive strengthens our good seeds. And then the negative shows us what we're doing in our minds. And the to-do helps us to purify those seeds and then to transition. So those are the three steps. There is the book on how to do the book. And you can go into that more deeply. There's much deeper explanation there and some suggestions. And I think, Sylvia, let's go on with our questions. Yeah, That's yeah. More let's, time than I expected. <laughs> let's, let's start with the questions. I uh, give you your first question, if you don't oh, mind. Okay. What, what are the seats to have this practice regularly? Helping somebody else to do something regularly. Also rejoicing in other things you do regularly. Like, do you feed yourself regularly? Maybe some of us do and maybe some of us don't. Do we sleep regularly? Do we help our children get to school? What are things that you do that are regular? and then dedicate that. Say, oh, I can do that. Let me take that energy and dedicate it to being able to do my book. Sylvia, Very good. How, yeah. Yeah. How, how do you find a good way to, to do all of your antidotes? There's six in a day. And then mm -hmm. at the end of the day, rejoicing, right? It feels like, too much to do. Yeah. So um, very important is to make the to-dos doable, right? You have to be short, realistic, precise, and keep track of it. So I always set a tick when I completed my to-do. And I feel like a very reliable person because whenever I write a to-do, I know I'll do it. So every to-do you write down is a promise to yourself and to the world, right? You have to keep it. And therefore, 
your to do has to be very specific and small. Don't overload yourself. Small, specific, realistic. So you can so you can do it uh, at that moment or during the next couple of hours. For example, I'm going to the supermarket and my neighbor is a single working mom with a baby, a big dog and two cats. So my to-do is send her a text and ask her whether she needs something. It's a perfect to-do and it doesn't take a lot of time. Another example, you can put in something you're going to do anyway, like uh, call mom or visit grandma. And then you do it consciously because it's a complete path of action. We went through the components for that. Mm. Or uh, there was tension with a colleague at work. So a perfect to-do is think about 10 good qualities this person has, or five, if you can't come up with 10, right? Or you rejoice about the success uh, or the kindness of another person. And again, be, be uh, specific and truthful, right? So this idea of the person was really great. I liked it. These are uh, easy to do's and um, they don't um, over, you, you, you don't feel overwhelmed by those. And uh, here is an important advice from Ayanagatuna. He says, even if your present actions are modest, try to make a habit of thinking big because vast thoughts lead to vast actions which bring vast results. So an example would be, I fed the birds in the morning, that's my plus, right? And then, uh, I, I, of course I write down a minus, uh, and then the to-do, I dedicate the plus, the feeding the birds this morning, I dedicate it with vast thoughts. So uh, you can sit for a moment, close your eyes and think, by this deed of feeding the birds, may all beings always be provided with what they need. May they always have enough food and so on. So very beautiful and easy to do. Um, okay, next question for you. Lovely. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so how to make sure to keep the time during a busy business day. Uh, at the weekend and three days, it's easier to do it every two hours. But in a meeting or at the office, um, other tasks might override uh, my schedule. How do you handle this? And uh, do you take your book always with you? I'll answer the last question first, which is yes. So you don't want a great big book, you know, get something small that will fit in your backpack or your purse or whatever it is. Um, there's Sylvia's right there. It has a little place for a pen, so she never has to look for it. And it's right there and she takes it with her. So yeah, find, and also find a book that's attractive, that you want to write in. like. I don't have mine right here, but it has a beautiful cover. It's very inviting, right? It's like, oh, yes, let me open my book. So get a book that is beautiful. Give a book that's beautiful to somebody else, right? A blank book. And so that they can write in it. And then you can have one that's beautiful as well. And I feel like we already went over how to keep yourself on track during the day using your rhythm of the day, even in business, busy business days, you're going to go to the bathroom. You're going to eat, hopefully. 
you're going to stop and have something to drink. So again, look at your personal rhythms. And the best way to keep that is to do it every day. And if you miss a day, that's okay. Just start again. It's just like with meditation and yoga. If you miss a day or if it's a rough day, just start again. Don't give yourself a hard time. Rejoice that you remember. Oh, I forgot to do my book. And then do it, right? So use my recommendation really is use the rhythms of your day. It doesn't take long. Well, and I shouldn't say that. In the beginning for me, it took a long time. I had to sit and think, oh, what is the plus? What is the negative? What is the antidote? I found though that as I did it over and over again, my mind got more creative mm -hmm. and more tuned in so that it wasn't as difficult. Yes, sometimes there were vows like, I don't know how to relate to this one today. And sometimes to be honest, I wouldn't fill it in because it didn't feel appropriate. It wasn't something that was coming up, and especially at the beginning. But again, I'll say, as you get more in tune with your own heart and mind, you will find your pluses and your negatives. So Sylvia, what about just thinking about doing the, you know, rather than writing it down in your book, just thinking about it, what do you think about that? Do you think it's a, do you think that that is as helpful, I guess, as writing it down? Yeah. So, well, in my experience, I can't do that. It wouldn't help me much. So Master Shanti Deva describes the joys of living in forest solitude, right? He says, learn to treat yourself and others exactly the same and then spend your time in the woods, gentle walks and thoughts of helping others. So I guess this is the kind of life where the mind then is still enough to focus that way on your promises, on the 10 good deeds, the six perfections and so on. Mm. Then you have a different mindset. But in my everyday life with work, family, projects, mundane tasks, challenges. I couldn't do that. And uh, the, the book is like the Dharma backbone of my busy everyday life. And even in, in retreat, I do my book. Okay, so uh, next question. Can I just add something? To oh, that? yes, please. You know, we're watching ourselves 24 seven. And I think that there's a power in writing down and seeing yourself write down each vow, what you're working on, your positive, your negative. For me personally, thoughts are fleeting. They come and they go. I don't know. That's just the way my mind works because the next thought comes on and the next thought. And there's something in writing it down physically that plants a different kind of seed than just thinking about it by seeing it on paper. It also helps to really admit what you're doing by seeing it on paper. And then you can also look back. You know, you can go back to your book from two years ago and go, oh, wow, I'm still working on that one. Or, wow, that one, I don't, it's really changed since then. 
So I would really recommend putting it down, whether it's, you know, if you're, you have a digital notebook, again, write it down in your digital notebook. Don't just mark it in your mind, but do it physically. It plants a much stronger seed, I believe, to see yourself doing that. Yeah. That's my okay. recommendation. <laughs> okay, next question for you. Um, how can I keep a record of happiness and joy? That's first part of the question. Okay. And the second is um, how to make sure that your goal motivation seats are corresponding, that your goal motivation seats, maybe that uh, um, how to make sure that you have corresponding seats uh, for your goal. This person didn't keep writing because the goal was not clear. And uh, so the seat correspondence was not accurate. So this is, I'm gonna go with the last one first, the goal. This is something that we need to really check in with our minds about. What are we trying to accomplish? What is our goal? And that's something important to get clear in our own minds. If it's muddy, then exactly. You're, you, you will have seeds that are gray and maybe will sprout and maybe won't sprout. We, so how do you get clarity on your goal? Meditate on it. Help someone else reach their goals. And dedicate that right to you being clear on your own goals. That's the beginning. So that could be in your six times book. I don't know what my goal is. And then do your four steps. Find someone else. Plant the seed. And then you will have at least some clarity on your goal. And then I would say there's two ways. One is to study what the seeds are and their results, right? The what we call the correlations and what goals you would get. Also, see what the connection is in your own mind. Because those are very strong seeds. Like if my goal, then let's just say I just finished building a house. That was my big goal. I am in my new house. I've been here less than a week. What did I do? I helped others build a house. That was my, it was a simple goal. What were the seeds that I planted? Helping others to get things for their house, helping others, giving, you know, money to people all around the world who were improving their houses or building houses, things like that. So make those, they can be very simple, those connections. Just giving somebody else what they want helps to plant the seeds for what you want. The first step is to figure out what you want. Right? So how do you keep a record of all of this? How do you keep a record of your happiness and your joy? For one thing, your six times book, you've got six positive things and you can rejoice in all of those and as Sylvia said she just does a check mark it's like yes so even before the end of the day you can look at your positive after you've written it and rejoice in it if you have something special you want to rejoice about I add that at the top of my book or something I'm working really hard on, I add that at the top of my book. So it becomes a seventh to do, to keep a record of happiness and joy. Also at the end of the day, you could just make a list and do your coffee meditation on it of the things that made you happy, the things that you brought happiness to others and joy to others and rejoice in all of that. 
I know that rejoicing can be really hard for people. And it's important to rejoice. So maybe find a rejoicing partner, someone you can rejoice with. And also, I would say that's a really good thing to do with the Six Times book is find a book partner. And you guys can talk together and ask questions and support each other. That really helps in keeping a book. So Sylvia, mm -hmm. um, let me see. Let me read this question. So there's a vow that says, um, when we're reading anything, whether it be anything like it says to read the Dharma and to see it as Dharma, just like when we yeah. go to the movies to see it all as Dharma. And they're asking, what about electronic texts? And if so, then how do I respect them? When we have physical texts, we talk about putting them in a clean place and a high place and not stepping on them and not mistreating them. But what do you do? And you're a book publisher. What do you do? <laughs> How do you relate to this vow with electronic text? Yeah, I think it's a good question. And uh, the, the vow uh, regards uh, a written text, right? Every written text. So uh, I think uh, because it is a written text, um, we can, in, in which form, what, it doesn't matter, right? Uh, it, it, it applies this one to every text. And uh, I think respect is an attitude. It, it matters how you feel about it. If, if you think, if you're doing your book, for example, digitally, uh, and you think, oh, what a genius tool Geshe-la gave us here for our spiritual growth. That's uh, how you can respect it, right? The, the, the attitude, how you think about it. Mm. And um, there was a question in the chat um, whether you can... Uh, keep your book digitally. And uh, I know that uh, there are uh, different apps for the book. And uh, I never tried an app uh, because in, in my opinion and in my experience, there are many advantages of keeping the book on paper. Uh, one is also that you can focus on different aspects that also uh, keep your vows fresh. Um, I will uh, probably later, if you have time enough, give you a couple of uh, examples. And uh, also, uh, I love to prepare my book um, for the next couple of days or next couple of weeks. And um, this brings my promises, the vows, closer to my heart because while I'm writing, I'm thinking about it, I make connections, I have ideas. And uh, so uh, that also helps me to discover many layers and aspects. That was my answer. Do you wish to add something? I was just, I was just going to say for me, that's why I like doing it in the morning. I film my book for the day in the morning. Mm. Because then I have them in my mind all day long. Mm. And I'm thinking about them. And it functions the same way. I don't do it so far ahead. Mm. So, yeah. So, okay, so next questions. Mm, it has two parts. Maybe I read the first part and then you answer, or do you want the whole question together? Let's do the whole question, go ahead. Okay, so um, when you fill in the, the vows, freedom vows, refuge vows, bodhisattva vows, how many times a day do you need to make entries in the diary and how many vows at a time? 
Mm -hmm. And uh, second is when you fill in, in uh, the book uh, with your vows and you have, for example, freedom vows uh, and, and uh, refuge vows and bodhisattva vows, like not to kill, not to steal, and they are duplicated you when you fill them out so does this mean that you need to uh, write about the vows twice on the same day or do you skip a vow good questions and so we do we only do six vows a day and in the book on how to do the book it gives you a way that you can cycle through them every day when you have certain vows. So if you just have, say, the 10 vows, the 10 non-virtues, then you would just do one, two, three, four, five, six the first day, and then seven, eight, nine, ten, one and two the second day. And that way you get to know them really well. Once you add on other vows, and especially you then pick, there's a way to do a certain amount of freedom vows, a certain amount of refuge vows, a certain amount of bodhisattva vows. So you're doing some from each group. So you're not like doing six freedom vows, six refuge vows, and six bodhisattva vows. In this case, you would be doing two, two, and two. So only do six at a time. I think by limiting ourselves to six at a time, we can really focus on them. Whereas if we're trying to do 36 vows in a day, that we wouldn't be able to focus our minds very well on what we're doing and how we're doing it. So limited to six. And even if they repeat themselves, which happens, right? Because they, these are the things that we do the most. These are the, that's why we have them. And that's, that's why we have vows. That's why we keep having the same ones over and over again. They are the ones that human beings tend to to do the most or to kind of like say killing, killing bugs or having somebody kill an animal for us to eat or um, I don't know, those are the two that just jumped into my mind. But how many different ways do we kill during the day? Even if we don't take care of our own body, right, then we're killing it. So there's many different ways and we do them all the time and that's why these vows come up over and over again. So does that mean that you need to fill them out twice or three times if they come up in your different groups of vows? Yeah, it does, it does. And get more and more subtle with how you are doing them. You know, in the beginning, we just think of the gross way that we're doing them. Oh, I was trying to catch a spider to put it outside, positive thing. But the jar slipped and I squished it, negative thing, right? That's a gross thing, but get down as we get more and more used to these vows, we go closer and closer and closer in to see what the more and more subtle ways that we're breaking these vows. And by doing them over again, if we take this practice as a practice that is going to help me to reach enlightenment, then doing them, duplicating them in a day is helpful rather than a hindrance. It, gives us another chance to think about it and how we might be breaking it. So 
It was Sylvia. Yeah. Wait, uh, so uh, my recommendation on that um, would be uh, use different aspects, you know, like the first one mentioned, uh, uh, don't kill. So if you write down, don't kill, or protect life, or help others to live a good life, or reduce stress, or strengthen health, you know, these are all different aspects of the first virtue and uh, you can be creative and have fun with it as well. Exactly, you need to be. <laughs> yeah, so can we do this practice at any time of day? Yeah? I was uh, muted, sorry. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, of course, yeah. So, um, and uh, there is a, a, a second part yeah, I know. to that I question. I just wanted you to answer that one first. Yeah, so um, I think, uh, I think we should uh, practice or the goal should be to do it six times a day, every day. To, to be honest, I think that's the, the matrix of the book. And uh, you find that matrix also uh, in, in the scriptures. So it should be a goal uh, to do that. Um, and this at person... any time and any day, I, uh, I, I'm not sure whether I uh, understand this question right. Um, but of course, you can do that more but uh, <laughs> you should try to do that, not less. <laughs> okay, so we only have three minutes left. Can you say this person, they, they don't have any special struggle, but they want to improve relationships, finances. How can they use the book to do that? Yeah, so um, mm, uh, in my example, you could use uh, the um, correlations from the diamond cutter or from karma of love or uh, from other books um, and, uh, and the 10 virtues, right? So the book will automatically uh, help you to improve in those areas of, of your life. Um, it, you, could, you could practice, for example, the 10 and focus on generosity, like do that twice a day. Yeah. And uh, that's an example, just uh, find your own emphasis and concentrate on your main uh, mental afflictions for a while, like anger, jealousy, whatever is bothering you most at the time. So, um, and, and I think uh, really we should be, um, we should be very, very creative with it. Uh, uh, Many people stop writing it because, uh, you know, after a couple of weeks when they just put down, uh, don't kill, uh, don't steal, um, no uh, sexual conduct, misconduct. So you, you tend to always write this, didn't do it, <laughs> won't do it. So of course that's boring, but try uh, to look around uh, in your environment, what comes up, what, what presents yourself to you. Uh, there are, like I said, different aspects to every uh, vow or the virtues, um, or even to our mental afflictions. Mental afflictions also have many, many layers and to explore those is kind of adventurous. Thank you. So <laughs> we've come to the end of our time here. And I want to thank everybody for coming and for all our translators and ACI, all the staff and volunteers again. We did that at the beginning. And I hope that this has been helpful. And I recommend that if you have more questions and ideas and thoughts about it, go to the book on the book. And I believe that we will be putting up information about how to have access to that. Find a book partner, find somebody who you can do the book with 
And um, maybe Ale, could we start a telegram chat for people who want to ask more questions and we can try and answer them? Yes, totally. We can do that for sure. Oh. Oh. And um, we will let I'm you I'm gonna turn it there. all over to you now. Thank you, thank Sylvia. You. And thank you, ACI. And thank you all of you for working on changing the world. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Venerable Gelse. And thank you, Sylvia, for this wonderful class. Uh, it was very beneficial. And please come back and teach again in another special class of this series, uh, bringing wisdom to life. Um, I, I could say on behalf of all the participants that this was very, very beneficial for us. And I want to encourage all the participants to send some flowers and love on the chat to our teachers. Thank you so much for all the time you, you spend um, preparing for this class. Now I'll give some other announcements. Um, as you might know, ACI uh, has many free programs and this is our mission to bring uh, wisdom to life, to share timeless wisdom to everybody. So if you would like to support our mission, um, with a monetary offering or donation, please um, do it. We will use your donation wisely. But if you don't, you you don't, you are not in the position to donate money at, at this moment. You can also donate your time and become a volunteer and help us to spread um, the Dharma in many languages. So please. Um, become a volunteer or become a donor. And be, um, I wanna say also about the book. Um, we have the request from the teachers that they would like to have the book um, in many languages a few weeks ago. And I just want to rejoice with everybody and thank all the translators that translate the six time book for all of us for free. And that book will be published in our platform. So if you haven't looked our study platform, please look all the amazing courses that we have there. We have paid courses, we have free courses, we have the special classes, we have a lot of wisdom there available for you anytime. So I invite all of you to check our platform and thank you, the translators and the editors and everybody involved to become, uh, to bring the bringing wisdom to life. And last thing, we will have Lam Room 43, the magic meditations, the empty magic meditations with Geshe Michael Roach. The starting the at 6 p.m. Arizona time. If you haven't registered, Ale, I think you're frozen, or is it just me? Oops, and uh, you're frozen. Ale is frozen, yeah. I think it's to me. Just when she's announcing Lam Rim. Oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> Maybe, uh, Ali, if you hear me, you can write the details in the chat so everyone will know, or Svetlana could do that. Alona. Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh perfect. Yeah, perfect. There we go. Alona added that into the chat. Or Svetlana did. So, okay. Yeah. Please Great. come and join us. It starts in on Friday in Arizona, on Saturday, in other parts of the world for nine days, the whole retreat. 
We would love to see you at Diamond Mountain personally. If not, please join us on Zoom. And there's the URL in the chat that you can register and come to this incredible Dharma party about exchanging self and others, about Tong Men, right? And Geshe is going to give us some new ideas and insights, deeper ones into Tong Men and how to use it. And as you can see, ACI just keeps growing and growing and continuing to spread the Dharma deeper and deeper. And we all benefit from it incredibly. So please join us, please help us to continue this and we'll see you next time. See you next time. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank translators. You, thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>